Do you have a teaching of the difference between judgment and discernment? If you if you have one, can you get the link? Okay. So discernment and judgment. All right. What are the two difference differences? Now they kind of are one and the same in some aspects, but we must use what good judgment. We must use good judgment, and I think that word should really be discernment, because judgment is when you judge something and bring a verdict on something, right? Discerning is when you bring understanding, okay? So really, when you think about it, they are absolutely two different things, but they've been used as one is the same. So discernment is when you have complete and total understanding and clarity of something. So you go to the Lord for discernment so you can have clear, complete understanding and clarity on something, okay? But if you have to judge something, that means a verdict must come. It must be what? Carried out. Big difference. Big difference. So if you have discernment on something, if you're praying for discernment, you want what? Revelation, understanding, clarity. But if you want to bring judgment on something, there must be a verdict or a decision on it, and it must be carried out. So if you're going to bring judgment on something, you better make sure you have discernment first. Are you hearing me, darling? If you want to bring judgment on something, if you want to have judgment on something, so these people say, only God can judge. Don't judge me. So if you're judging someone, it means that you're bringing a verdict against them and you're carrying it out. You're saying they are something. You're saying like, I'm judging you. I've come to a verdict. And now I'm going to carry out this judgment on you and you better blah, 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 blah. That's judgment. But discernment is saying, hmm, I'm discerning and getting clarity on what's going on with that person. And I'm going to pray for them so they don't suffer judgment from the Lord. Are we supposed to judge righteously? Yes, that's why we must have good discernment. We have to be careful not to falsely accuse people. Because when you start accusing, it means you're bringing judgment. And God hates false accusations. There are sins that God hates. He hates gossip. He hates a slanderous mouth. And he hates, right, people who falsely accuse others. Because it's a judgment. Right? It's The word Satan means accuser in Hebrew. What? Yes. So you better have good discernment and seek the Lord first, according to Jeremiah 33, 3. So discernment and judgment must go together. Okay. And if we're going to judge as Christians, we are to judge what? Righteously. If we've, we've asked for discernment, we pray according to Jeremiah 33, 3, that the Lord will show us the secret thing, the hidden thing, the thing we do not know. He reveals it to us and gives us confirmation. All right, okay, we see what's going on there. We've got clarity. It's definitely evil. There's definitely a lot of evidence with it. Now, I'm going to judge righteously on the situation and bring my verdict on the situation, but we must do this with the partnership of the righteous one, and that's Jesus Christ. And ask for confirmation before we start judging, right? So, discernment first. Get confirmation from the Lord of exactly what's going on. Pray for discernment and understanding and clarity. Then you can, what, judge righteously where you can come to a verdict on something and saying, okay, that's exactly what's going on. This is my judgment on it. I'm going to judge righteously. I'm bringing a verdict. I'm saying, look, this is what's going on. Now, I want to judge righteously. I don't want to falsely accuse. So I'm going to pray for that person. 
that they don't suffer God's judgment. And they come to their knees in repentance, a free gift for everyone. Now, if you go into the courts of heaven and you ask for a judgment from God through the blood of Jesus, that's carried out on your behalf by the authority of Jesus Christ, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, by the angels of the Lord. God gives you a verdict. And God always judges in your favor if you repent and you ask for the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus will always give you a judgment verdict from God in your favor. That's why it's the good news, my friends. So if you stand in the gap and you repent for somebody, you ask and you stand in the gap for them and you ask, Father God, you say, Lord, we're asking for you to move this person from the courtroom of judgment to the throne of grace and mercy. And we're asking for the blood of Jesus Christ to speak for them until you can bring them, them to repentance. You're asking for a reprieve for that person. You're interceding for them because you're a king and a priest. You're an intercessor. What do priests do? Priests make intercession for others before God through King Jesus. What do kings do? Well, we make commands. We carry out decrees. Or we command them. So I think a really good person to learn more about this is to study uh, Jeanette Strauss. She really teaches on this. GloriousCreations.net. She really teaches between, you know, judgment and discernment, how the courts of heaven works, how heaven works as a legal system, how God is the ultimate righteous judge, but we are also called to judge righteously, but we must always bring it before the righteous judge. Discernment first, pray, get clarity on it, then pray for that person. Then we must judge righteously before we try to bring a verdict against somebody. Because that's judgment. Judgment must have what? A verdict. And we need to be careful that we don't judge somebody wrongly. And we must do this with King Jesus and the leading of the Holy Spirit. And we must pray for them that they come to the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they come to their knees on repentance as well. Now, if I come to some verdicts about certain things that are going on in government and with certain people, yeah, because I pray for discernment, pray for discernment, pray for confirmation, pray for proof on these things. And I've had to, you know, judge righteously about these people. But the thing is, is I had to work on the discernment part of it first before I came to my verdict and judge that person like, oh, they're doing evil. They must be, right? I got a lot of evidence, I a lot of discernment. Praying for discernment, showing the hidden thing, the secret thing, right? You see, even Jesus did that. He didn't even he didn't even judge a woman when there were all those other people judging them, right? Because he knew all their sins. So before you judge, make sure all your sins are repented for and covered in the blood of Jesus Christ, lest you be judged. You see, you understand? So discernment is always better first than judgment. And then go to the Lord with that on the judgment part. Okay? That's why I always pray the acts of judgment. If there's bad influences around my daughter, you know, say my, say my daughter, had, she had some friends, and they were just kids. And I didn't want to judge them. I knew, I didn't know who was doing bad. I didn't know... Who was the bad influence? So I prayed for discernment. I don't want to be like, look at that kid. They're bad. I don't want to like judge them. Right. Even though I saw bad stuff. I was like, okay, Lord, you have an axe of judgment. I'm discerning that these are bad influences around my child. So I'm going to come to you according to Matthew chapter three, verse 10. This is why this prayer for the axe of judgment is so powerful. And it's, it's safe because you won't be judged for being judged. 
You won't be judged for judging others. God does the judgment. You just have the discernment. And you say, you go before Father, according to Matthew chapter 3, verse 10, and you say, Father God, these influences around my child are not producing good fruit. I don't want to judge these people. I don't want to judge these children, but I have discernment. I've asked you for discernment to give me understanding of what's going on. So I want your acts of judgment to move in this situation. Because I don't want to be judged for judging others. In case I have a mistake. So the same prayer is the acts of judgment. Discernment first. Get understanding. Jesus says, look at the fruit. Is the fruit bad? Okay, fruit's bad. Go to the Lord. Say, Father God, you have an acts of judgment. I'm discerning bad fruit over here. So I'm asking you for your acts of judgment to come and remove those unholy, ungodly, bad fruit influences away from my child. Away from my government. Away from my city. Away from my nation. So to me, discernment is the most important thing you can have. Then go to the Lord for judgment. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Removing ungodly relationships and influences, the acts of God's judgment. It's a really safe way to pray without you specifically rendering a judgment on somebody that requires a verdict that requires to be carried out. So you don't judge you lest you be judged, you know. So you need to be careful with the whole judgment part. And we must judge what is called righteously, okay? So I went to the Lord on this, and I realized that discernment is the most important thing. Getting understanding of the situation. Getting clarity of the situation. Looking at the fruit. If the fruit is bad, then you go to the Lord and ask him to bring his acts of judgment on the situation. And then it's God that does it. And uh, removing ungodly relationships and influences, acts of God's judgment. So I have I have a teaching on discernment and a prayer for discernment. And everybody should pray all the time. And I also have this prayer for the acts of God's judgment. I don't care how evil they are, how bad their fruit is, you should always pray that they come to the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and they fall to their knees and repent. It's a free gift for everybody.